Hey guys welcome back to the channel. This is part 13 of what if Deku was trained by Garu. If you guys enjoy this what if and want to see part 14 of it, comment down below and let me know. And go ahead and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. DD Deku. How the fuck are you alive? Bakugo yelled as he stomped his way over to Izuku. The blonde halted in front of dark figure and stared him in the eye, waiting for a response. Overhaul Izuku responded. Bakugo felt a wave of anger flow over him. Cut that shit out you damn Deku. Fucking elaborate. Holy shit you're so dumb sometimes kakin. It ceases to amaze me why All Might would pick you as his successor. Izuku snickered. Bakugo's eyes widened at Izuku's comment. Umbaku bro, what does he mean? Kirishima asked. Oh has Kakchan here not explained it to you? Will you see? 65% smashed Bakugo screamed as he interrupted Izuku. The blonde threw his hand towards Izuku's face causing a massive blast of air to shoot out from the impact. Bakugo felt his heart racing as he panted from the attack. His arm felt like it had just cracked open. He went to pull himself back but felt something tighten around his fist, causing his heart to drop. The smoke had cleared just enough to reveal what happened. Izuku stood strong holding Bakugo's struggling fist dead in its tracks. It's rude to interrupt Kakchan. So let me finish. Izuku yelled as he swung Bakugo into the air, before slamming him into the concrete. Kashima threw his arm up to cover his face from the air blast. As he slowly lowered his arm he was met by a horrific sight. A bloodied and barley conscious Bakugo laying in the center of a massive impact crater. Now as I was saying, this fucker right here is All Might's actual successor. He's supposed to be the next symbol of peace. Izuku started to say. He looked around the crowd who were all waiting with white eyes for him to continue. And he inherited All Might's quirk. What? How's that possible? He's lying. Izuku waited as he glanced down at Bakugo and saw him looking back with malicious intent. It's the truth and you all should be able to connect the dot. But whether you actually believe me or not, I'll could care less. Izuku why? Just why are you using your power for all of this? Yuraka asked. Izuku didn't look up. He kept his gaze on Bakugo's. He lifted one leg up and shot it into Bakugo's shoulder which let out a deafening crack. HHH. Bakugo screamed. Three days. Three days until I come back to this school and put down every single one of you that's in my way. If you wish to be spared, drop out while you still can. Everyone else, you've been warned. Izuku announced as he dropped Bakugo's limp arm and jumped into the sky. Bakugo watched the dark figure disappear into the sky until the pain finally caught up to him and he went unconscious. Bakugo felt a large amount of pressure come off of his chest as his eyes shot open. He clutched onto the top of his shirt as he rapidly took in deep breaths. He sat there for a minute, regaining his composure before finally speaking up. But nothing came out. He tried again only to get the same result. Frustrated Bakugo lifted his hand to his mouth and felt a sludge-like substance covering the lower part of his face. What the fuck? Bakugo looked down at the rest of his body and saw it was all covered by the same sludge-like substance. The only things not covered were anything above his nose and his fingertips. Suddenly a cold chill ran down his spine followed by a bright white light that forced him to close his eyes. The light disappeared allowing Bakugo to slowly open his eyes. He looked to his right to find a line of people next to him. Not a single one of them paid him any attention. They all had their gazes locked in front of them. Slowly Bakugo turned his head to see what they were interested in and felt his heart drop. Standing in front of him were two men, their faces were blurred, but the altercation was clear. One man stood above the other while holding his face. The dark red light emitted from the man's palm as his prey tried to pry away from his grasp. Suddenly another flash of light exploded from in front of him forcing Bakugo to shut his eyes. When he opened them again he was met with a new sight. The man who was being attacked stood in front of Bakugo. The man had a small smile as lifted his hand out in front of Bakugo. He slowly opened his palm to reveal a glowing light which Bakugo didn't hesitate to grab. As soon as his hand met the man's a huge surge of power flowed through Bakugo. His eyes widened as the man in front of him started to fade away. So here the ninth. The man echoed as he disappeared. Bakugo shot upwards and clutched onto his shirt again as he sat there panting trying to figure out what happened. Everything just felt off. His eyes trailed from the bed onto his arm where he found what was causing the weird feeling. His hand was glowing like the first time he ever used full cowling. Um, Bakubro. A voice spoke up, ripping Bakugo away from his trance. His eyes shot towards the voice, ready to fight, but a wave of calmness washed over him when he was met by his best friend. Bakubro what happened? Kirishima asked once again. What do you mean? Bakugo asked in between breaths. The redhead pointed to the other side of the room. Bakugo followed his hand and examined the window Kirishima was pointing at. There were cracks sprouting across the entire panel. It looked like the slightest touch would cause the entire thing to fall apart. You were out called and it just happened all so fast. 
Your heart rate spiked followed by your hands starting to glow. And before I knew it the window cracked and you were awake. Akugo sat for a second regaining his composure before meeting his friend's worried gaze. I'll explain everything after all this shit is done shitty hair. I promise. Hiroshima hesitantly nodded and stood up from his chair. I'll go get a recovery girl. The redhead left the room, leaving Bakugo all alone. The blonde clenched his fist a couple of times until he heard the door slide open. Three broken ribs, multiple lacerations, left shoulder completely shattered, sprained wrist, and a concussion. You've really outdone yourself this time Katsuki. Recovery girl said slightly annoyed. It's not like I want to be sitting here with all these damn injuries. Bakugo responded. You don't have any injuries at the moment. Thanks to my healing and you being out cold, you healed quicker than usual. But if you run your mouth in here I'll make sure you do the teacher threatened. Bakugo felt a shiver creep down his spine at the teacher's remark. Yes ma'am. Bakugo whispered. Good. Now would you like me to let your friends in or no? Recover girl asked. Does Kirishima please? The teacher nodded and stepped out of the room. The blonde sat in silence until he heard the door slide open again. How you doing bro? Pretty shit, I got my ass handed to me in front of everyone, and on top of that All Might's going to kill me. Bakugo grumbled. The redhead sighed and plopped down next to the blonde's hospital bed. Don't worry about that stuff Baku bro, because we've got bigger problems to deal with. The redhead responded as he rubbed the back of his neck. Spit it out shitty hair. The blonde blurted out. Hiroshima let out a deep exhale as he looked up at the blonde. You've been out for three days. What? Whoa 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 chill out Baku bro. Everything's fine. The school's been reinforced, and Principal Nezu has had top heroes from all around the nation sent to help us. Kirishima said cheerfully. The smell of smoke instantly started to fill the room. It didn't take long for the smoke alarm to go off, signaling to recovery girl that something was wrong. What happened, Katsuki you're burning the sheets. The teacher screamed as she came through the doors. Akugo looked down and saw the embers starting to crawl down the sheet. He scoffed and tossed it off of him, while hopping off the bed. The young man sit back down now. Recovery gyro ordered. Akugo's eyes shot towards the teacher and let off a glare full of malice. He saw his teacher starting to lose her look of authority and back away from him. The school bringing all these heroes here won't make a single fucking difference. Bakugo said coldly as he left the room. The blonde made his way down the empty hallway as his mind started to run at the ideas presented to him in the infirmary. That damn Deku has gotten stronger every single time he gets pushed back into a corner, and today wouldn't be any different. He studied every pro hero in the nation, as if they were his idols. Bakugo stopped walking and dropped his gaze to the ground. They were his idols at one point. And that's going to make it that much easier for him, since he knows everything about them, including their weaknesses. Damn it. Bakugo yelled as he slammed his fist on a locker. Damage of skull property is punishable by suspension young Bakugo so be careful. A voice called from behind. The blonde pulled his fist from the locker to see a perfect impression of his hand in the metal. He finally turned around to be met with the hopeful eyes of his mentor. Come young Bakugo. We have much to discuss in a short amount of time. We have over 20 pros stationed on the north side of the school, 10 on the west and east, and then 15 on the southern side. Not to mention a good portion of the police mixed in everywhere. It'll be suicide if he actually tries to attack us head on. Snipe spoke up. And that's exactly why he's going to attempt it. Think about it, if he somehow manages to stop all of us then everyone's going to lose faith in UA and heroes in general. Countered power loader. But we can't possibly lose, right? Present Mick asked a little worried. All the heroes turned to the man sitting at the head of the table. He sat in an elevated chair, and took a sip of his coffee. We must not underestimate young Midoriya. He's shown tremendous feats of strength and when backed into a corner he seems to excel more than ever. He must be treated as a danger to the entire school. Principal Nezu announced. And that is why we have enlisted not only all the teachers, but some of the most powerful heroes wanting to take down Midoriya. Nezu explained as he motioned to Endeavor, Hawks, Fourth Kind, Gunhead, Fat Gum and Mirko. I want to see what's so strong about this guy, he seems like he'll put up a challenge. Mirko said eagerly as she cracked her knuckles. He's a boy Mirko, and nothing more. Fourth kind scoffed. Then why did he hand your ass to you without breaking a sweat? The bunny hero retorted. Enough. Endeavor yelled causing the entire room to go silent. A skit, is no joking matter. We've seen firsthand how powerful he is. Not a single one of us could take him single-handedly, so it would all be in our best interests to listen to Nezu. Endeavor ordered. An uncomfortable silence spread throughout the room. Waiting for someone to speak up. Bakugo looked over at the formerly disgraced hero. It must have taken him a lot, to admit he's not the strongest, or the one in charge. Maybe half and half was right about that raging bastard finally changing. We also will be stationing the hero course students with a small amount of pros outside of the school. They will act as a last resort if Midoriya is somehow able to get through the gates. Now you all know where you're stationed. Please get there as soon as possible and prepare for the impending battle. That is all, dismissed.
Bakugo and the rest of the heroes stood up from the table and started their way towards the doors. Bakugo made only a couple of strides before feeling a hand grab his shoulder. Young Bakugo please stay behind for a moment. All Might asked. Bakugo nodded and waited for the rest of the teachers to file out of the room. Once they were gone it only left himself, All Might, and Aizawa in the room. What did you need to talk to me about? Asked Bakugo. Young Bakugo considering what Midoriya announced to everyone I deemed it necessary to inform Mr. Aizawa about one for all, and its true nature. All Might said bluntly. Bakugo's eyes whitened as they shot to his teacher. He just found the same lifeless eyes staring back. I'm not surprised to be honest. You've constantly been improving since day one, and the feats of strength you're starting to show can rival All Might's. Aizawa explained with a yawn. Since me and Aizawa had some time to sit down we were able to have the talk that really needed to happen. We've both come to the conclusion that you're probably the best match for Izuku. You had the most experience with him and understands how he thinks. Sadly in the current state you're in, Midoriya would most likely beat you. But we're not detoured. Well should I can take him. Cut the shit Bakugo your previous encounters show otherwise. Aizawa grumbled. Fuck that, it's different this time. I've got them supporting me now. At least one of them. The blonde growled. The two teachers raised an eyebrow at their student's comment. They looked at each other for some sign of understanding but saw none. I have no clue what he's talking about all might, but I need to get to my post before shit hits the fan. Make sure you don't take too long with him, Aizawa said as he walked over to the door. I would, responded all might. Aizawa nodded and stepped out of the room before shutting the door. What do you mean they're supporting you now? Bakugo went to speak but bit his tongue. He needed to make sure what he said wasn't filled with holes. There were seven standing in line with me not including those two that stood out. No one gave me any hints of who they were, and all that weird guy said was I'm the ninth. Wait I'm the ninth. The fucking previous users before me. They were all there. Bakugo screamed as his mind put it all together. Being Bakugo please calm down and explain. When I was unconscious I woke up in a world of its own. I couldn't move on my own at all, and the only other people there were the previous users of one for all. It had to be. Young Bakugo that seems pretty far-fetched. I was never able to contact any of the previous users. There was another guy. He gave off the same aura as all for one. Him? Can you describe to me anyone else you saw? Bakugo tried his best to remember the people from his vision. The only one that he got a good enough look of was the woman standing next to him. There was a woman, black hair, long white cape, and a mole right under her lip. Bakugo watched as All Might's face lost all its color. Not All Might whispered. It had to be them All Might. It's the only thing that makes sense. Bakugo pleaded. All Might leaned forward and rested his hands to his face. Bakugo could tell he was deep in thought. I believe you young Bakugo, but I'm still not sure what you meant by they support you. The one guy that was fighting with All For One gave me some weird orb. That's what caused me to wake up, and when I did, One For All felt different than it did before. The blonde explained. I'm sorry young Bakugo, but I do not know what to make of this situation. I simply just don't have the information to answer your questions at the moment. But I do have something else to help you with Midoriya. And what could you possibly offer me that could help me against that damn Deku? Under normal circumstances no one would ever be having this conversation, but these are not normal circumstances. Like me and Aizawa were saying we believe you're the best chance we have at defeating Midoriya. Sadly he is stronger than you at the given moment, but we have something to shift those tides and push you past your limits. This spit it out all might. The former hero smirked and reached into his pocket. He ruffled around until he found what he was looking for and pulled out a small container. He popped it open and grabbed one of the small objects inside before holding it up for Bakugo to see. Bakugo had seen something really similar to this before. It was the same shape and size as the bullet Izuku tried to hit him with, not even four days ago. That damn bullet won't do shit to him. He's quickless remember. Bakugo scoffed. You misunderstand Bakugo this bullet isn't meant for Midoriya. It's meant for you. Bakugo leaned back in his chair as he searched his teacher's eyes for some sort of clue to what he was talking about. All Might just let out a chuckle before putting the bullet back into his case and handed the container to Bakugo. In Bakugo, what you hold in your hand is a perfected version of Trigger. Wait the same shit Overhaul is trying to spread around the underworld. Bakugo asked, surprised. Precisely, with the help of the Hero Association, we were able to synthesize a perfect dose and make a limited supply just for this battle. What you hold in your hand will be the only dose ever made. Why me? In Bakugo you must understand that Trigger is a very serious matter. It's highly addictive once you get a taste of ultimate power, but you're a different case. You're not operating at your full potential so Trigger is going to help you reach it. Once the drug wears off you'll still be able to train hard enough to retain that power. All Might explained. Bakugo nodded and placed the bullets into his pocket before standing up and making his way to the door. But before he exited he stopped in the doorway and called out to his mentor. Everyone around me is going to be at risk once I use this. 
It would be best, if we cleared out all the extras, that don't need to be here. The city's already been cleared completely out, and UA is reinforced to withstand the power of multiple high-level explosions. On the fact of them dying don't worry about that too much. Young Midoriya had made his intentions clear, when it comes to killing, us on the other hand. All Might trailed off. Bakugo scoffed and stepped into the hallway. He started his way to the locker room to change, but something kept bothering him. It doesn't seem right. Deku has no intention of killing us, but yet that's our entire goal. How fucked is that? But at the same time Bakugo, knew what kind of drive Izuku had. He wouldn't stop, unless he died trying. Sadly it all fell on Bakugo. I'm the one, that has to choose, if my friend lives or dies. Bakugo stood with the rest of the hero course who was spread out around UA's campus. He himself was stationed with the majority one one of students on the north side. Each student stood still waiting for their earpieces to announce the direction Izuku was coming from. Bakubro what time is it again? Kurishima asked as he approached the blonde. Get a fucking watch shitty hair. Please, the redhead pleaded. Holy shit you're needy. It's going on 8.30. Thanks bro. Kurishima cheered. Whatever. The two sat around for a little while longer, waiting for something to happen. Still no sign of Izuku. Do you guys think he's going to chicken out? Sero asked as he approached the duo. I hope so. It's still kind of scary for me to think about fighting Midoriya again. Kurishima replied as he rubbed his neck. Bakugo slowly stopped listening as their voices started to drown out. Where the fuck is he? He wouldn't make such a bold statement, and then bail on it, right? As if on cue a sudden pang shot, though Bakugo's body causing him to collapse onto one knee. Hey Baku bro what happened? Are you alright? Kurishima worriedly asked. Bakugo clutched onto his chest as he tried to regain his breath. What the fuck what that? It felt like a terrifying amount of power just drowned me. Get the fuck off me. Bakugo yelled as he pushed away the small crowd forming around him. Bakugo rapidly blasted himself to the top of Yue's gate, and activated the special binocular feature on his goggles as he started to scan the streets. It came from over this way. I swear to god. Bakugo's felt the air in his lungs drain as everything finally dawned on him. Standing by himself in a dark alleyway was Izuku. As soon as Bakugo locked eyes with him Izuku did a small wave before taking a step out of the darkness. The dark figure started walking down the street slowly gaining more and more speed, until he was doing a fast paced jog. Northwest inside. As all the heroes turned their heads a shockwave exploded from far down the street. The black blur rocketed towards him causing the glass from the surrounding buildings to shatter from the sheer amount of force he used to launch himself. Cementus quickly threw his hands into the ground in an attempt to create a wall but it was too late. Izuku rocketed into the pro causing another shockwave to shoot outward from the impact. As the dust settled it revealed Cementus on the ground bloody and unconscious, with Izuku standing over him. Kill him. One of the heroes yelled. The heroes encircled Izuku and quickly started edging their way closer. Izuku just stood still taking in a deep breath. He felt a pulse of energy building up in his stomach, and as he tensed up his muscles it exploded outwards. The heroes felt the rush of power flood over them causing them to stop dead in their tracks. A couple of them dropped to their knees, while others grabbed onto their chests trying to fill their lungs with air. What the fuck was that? Fortkind coughed out. Izuku took the moment to analyze who all stood in front of him. 19 heroes, most of them were low level and Izuku would barely even consider them pros, but there was a handful that stuck out. Specifically Fat Gum, Power Loader, Midnight, and Endeavor. The flame hero was the only one not to wave ear in front of Izuku. He stood strong and took a step forwards towards him, only for Izuku to disappear into thin air. Endeavor heard small muffled coughs coming from behind him. He slowly turned around to see Izuku holding Fort Kind in the air by his neck. A taste of true power. One derived purely from willpower and sheer strength. The power of being corkless. Izuku yelled as he smashed the hero's head into the ground. Izuku took off towards Fat Gum, only to be stopped by two of the lesser known heroes jumping out in front of him. Izuku sidestepped the first and sent a kick into his leg, causing a gut wrenching snap to echo throughout the battlefield. The hero dropped onto his knees, screaming as Izuku smacked the side of his palm into the man's temple, causing him to fall unconscious into the dirt. The second hero jumped back and shot out what looked to be a concentrated blast of water. Izuku stuck his hand out to block the water, and felt a tingling sensation run up his arm. He quickly shifted his eyes to his palm, only to see his skin slowly being melted away. Izuku cupped what was left of his palm until he had a decent amount of water in it, before spinning and dousing the hero at the same time. Izuku took a step towards Fat Gum, only to be met with a huge piece of metal being slapped across his face. He stammered backwards and looked up a power loader as he prepared to launch another attack. Izuku slammed his foot into the ground, causing a large portion of the road to break into the air. Quickly Izuku placed his palm onto a larger piece of concrete, and blasted it towards the pro. Power Loader attempted to throw his arms up to block, but was too late as the projectile smashed into his face, breaking his jaw cleanly on impact. He's injured. Take him down while we can. 
Midnight yelled as she unzipped her sleeve. Izuku turned to Midnight and smirked. He raised his hand up for her to see as it slowly grew back to its original form. Ah ah Midnight. Did you forget that I can heal myself? Also you should be more careful with your quirk, you would hate if it backfired on you. Izuku laughed as he sprinted towards the rated R hero. Midnight took a step back as she tried to figure out what Izuku meant. She couldn't understand at all how her quirk could backfire. Izuku was a teenage boy, her quirk would be at its best against him. Izuku closed the distance between them in an instant. Midnight threw a jab towards Izuku's head, but the figure easily evaded it. He stepped to her left and slashed at her thigh. The pro followed up with a kick that Izuku easily jumped over. As he flew above her, he slashed at her shoulder and her back as he landed. I used to love you heroes. I idolized you, hell I even wrote multiple versions of my own data books analyzing everyone about you. But it's actually kind of a great thing I did that. I know everything about your quirks. Including the fact that any exposed skin can secrete your perfume. Izuku explained as he laid into one of the pros that was confident enough to attack him. Midnight's eyes widened in concern as she looked around her. A purple fog had spread out from the cuts Izuku made on her costume causing several of the heroes to pass out on the floor. As she turned to Izuku she was met with a massive blow to the head, causing her to fly back and slam into Yue's hole. Izuku landed gracefully on the ground and smiled as he faced the remaining pro heroes. Endeavor stood next to Fat Gum as the other heroes cowered behind them. My quirk's not suited for working with others. How do you want to do this? Endeavor asked as he started to raise his body temperature. Just jump in when you see fit. Fat Gum yelled as he took off towards Izuku. Fat Gum raised his arm up to punch Izuku when he felt pain explode in his stomach. The hero looked down as he coughed out a mouthful of blood, only to see Izuku standing in front of him with his fist buried in his stomach. Izuku squared his feet and sent out a powerful barrage of attacks into the hero's gut. Slowly Izuku started pushing back the hero until he landed a massive shoulder chuck, causing the pro to skid away. Fat Guck hunched over as he attempted to collect his breath. He could feel the smoke rolling off his body as he prepared to unleash his ultimate move. His attacks feel as if I'm getting hit with a gunshot, and it doesn't help that he seems to have an endless supply of stamina. I need to end this now. He probably knows everything about my quirk, if he was telling the truth about those books. Luckily he has no idea about my trump card, but I don't know if I'll even be able to have enough time to charge it up. Endeavor. Fat Gum called out. Flash fire fist. Izuku jumped back as a massive blast of concentrated fire flew by him. I'm sick of you Endeavor. Whenever I'm trying to carry out my business you always seem to stick your nose into it. Izuku said slightly annoyed. Your actions are those of a villain's and I'll be damned if I let you act without retribution. I'm no villain Endeavor on the contrary actually. I'm a liberator, someone who is willing to give their life to help those in need. Those who are quirkless, tell me Endeavor have you ever helped the quirkless population? No, they. Endeavor started safe but was cut off when Izuku barreled into his chest. Oof. Where were you Endeavor? The quirkless people, your family, Shoto, you call yourself a hero, but look at everyone you failed to save. Take this. Fat Gum yelled as he blasted Izuku in the head. The attack echoed throughout the area followed by a huge gust of wind. As it settled Endeavor scoffed at the sight in front of him. I never knew you could burn up your fat like that fat gum. Call me impressed. But sadly it's still not enough. You're powerless now. Just stand down and save yourself a lot of broken bones. Nev. Fat gum's body dropped face first into the dirt as he lost consciousness. Izuka lowered his hand and looked over at Endeavor who was visibly pissed off. I warned him so I don't feel bad. He chose his fate. Izuku explained as he inspected his arm. The color had changed to a light gray with Izuku's original dark hue slowly growing down from his upper arm. Ha. Huh. Didn't expect him to cause so much damage. No wonder he's so highly looked upon. It looks like it's just you and I endeavor, and if I'm right the rest of the heroes will be here shortly. But that would cause some problems so let's wrap this up. Izuku said as he took a fighting pose. Endeavor was fuming. He could feel his blood starting to boil from the comments Izuku made. You're too cocky punk. Prominence burn. Hey Bakuber you think we're going to have to fight him? Asked Kurishima. From the looks of it, he wiped the floor with fourth kind. My bets it's going to come down to how good Fat Gum's absorption is, and if Endeavor can land a solid attack. Bakugo responded. Bakugo knew deep down though it was only a matter of time before Izuku broke through the gate. It took everything in him not to jump off the gate and attack Izuku, but he knew that to have a chance of beating Izuku, he needed to wait for all the heroes to converge on him. Fat Gum's pretty strong he should be able to take him. You're too optimistic shitty hair. A sudden explosion echoed throughout the air as a large cloud of smoke fumed from a part of Yue's wall. The students quickly ran over to the source of the explosion, only to feel their hearts drop. Standing slightly inside Yue's campus was Izuku with Endeavor laying under his foot. The flame hero slowly grabbed onto Izuku's leg as a small flame burned from his palm. The dark figure looked down at the battered pro and shook his leg until the hero lost his grip. 
Izuka raised his foot before plunging it back square into the hero's chest, causing cracks to shoot out around the newly formed crater. The students stood still in fear waiting to see Izuku's next move. The dark figure stepped off of the hero, and walked down until he stood in front of his former classmates. You all chose to be here today. Remember that as you witness a true hero make this world a better place. Izuka looked over his shocked classmates. He could see the fear in their eyes. He took a step off Endeavor's limp body, and walked down towards the crowd. What's wrong with you guys? It's like you've seen a ghost. Izuka laughed. You're going to be a ghost, after I pummel the shit out of you. Mariko yelled as she flew over Yue's protective wall. The rabbit hero flew through the air, attempting to land a massive kick to Izuku's neck. The dark figure easily caught her leg, and tossed her off to the side. She skidded across the concrete, before standing up with a smirk on her face. Though Hawks was spot on with you. You really are strong. I hope you can keep up with me, so I can get some sort of entertainment from this. Mariko laughed as she bounded towards Izuku. The rabbit hero dashed to her left, and threw a hard right kick aimed for Izuku's side. The dark figure easily parried the attack, and countered with a kick of his own. Mariko ducked down causing Izuku, to raise an eyebrow at the hero's speed. Mariko noticing Izuku's slight falter quickly swept his leg out from under him, and did a front flip-like motion, and drove her heel into Izuku's stomach. The dark figure slammed into the ground as Mariko stood over him with a devilish smirk. I guess I overestimated you kid. Maybe your mentor should have taught you to back, what you say with strength, not just emotion. Akugo felt his heart drop at the hero's comment. She's fucked. Izuku's arms dug into the dirt causing the hero to take a step back. Don't you dare call me kid or insult my mentor. Izuku threatened as he pushed himself back onto two feet. It's nothing personal kid, it's just the true. Izuku smashed his fist the hero's gut causing her to puke on impact. Izuku didn't stop there though. He wasn't going to until Mirko reconsidered being a hero after this battle. Akuga watched from the side as Izuku unloaded on Mariko. Something caught his eye though. Izuku's stikes were slow and hard, he was focusing more on power than on technique. Akugo blasted himself forward hoping to catch Izuku off guard. He inched closer and closer and once he could, Bakugo blasted himself in a diagonal angle, and threw his arm towards Izuku's head. The dark figure swung his head to the right and snagged onto Bakugo's ankle. Using the moment from Bakugo's explosions Izuku easily swung the blonde around, and launched him into the side of Yue's wall. Mariko not wasting a second of time charged Izuku, and landed a solid hit to his back. Izuku skidded backwards as he regained his composure. He watched as Bakugo peeled himself off of the wall, and limped his way back to Mariko's side. The two gave each other a nod, and took off towards him at full speed. Bakugo flew in front of Mariko, and extended both of his hands. Stun grenade. Izuku quickly covered his eyes and felt his awareness of everything around him skyrocket. He took a step backward, and felt an incoming presence from his left side. He quickly ducked down and waited until he felt the presence above him. As soon as he did he jumped up with as much force as he could, and heard a deafening scream. Ah. Mariko yelled as she felt something tear through her insides. Izuka reopened his eyes and glanced up at the hero. He himself couldn't even comprehend how he managed to incapacitate the hero. He had Mariko locked in place above him, his left horn piecing clean through her lower stomach. Blur. The hero peeped out as blood ran through her lips. Izuka looked around. Everyone had stopped, and was just staring at him in horror. He sighed and bent his head to the left allowing the hero to slide off and thud onto the ground. That's a fatal wound, if not treated immediately, one of you go get her the treatment she needs, and I recommend it you act quickly, before I have to deal with someone's death on my conscience. Izuku boomed as he pointed to the shocked heroes. The police officer quickly ran out, and scooped up the shaking hero into his arms. He peered up at Izuku thinking to surprise him with an attack, but once he met the liftless eyes in front of him he quickly reconsidered. As he sprinted back towards the school, while calling for help Izuku returned his attention to his former classmates. I'm surprised you all stayed to be honest, considering what happened back at the factory I assumed some of you would be too scared to stand in front of me again. Izuku spoke as he took a step towards the crowd. Remember who really lost that night Deku? Cause as sure as hell wasn't us. Bakugo yelled as he charged again at Izuku. Really Kakchan? You took that night as a win. I wiped the floor with everyone there, and I did a significant amount of mental damage to some of you. Izuku sneered as he peeked to Kirishima. The redhead was visibly shaking as he remembered what happened that night. The horrible memories flooded his mind causing him to drop to his knees. How can you consider yourself a hero when all you do, is torment those against you? Bakugo screamed as let off a massive blast towards Izuku. The explosion blinded everyone causing them to stumble backwards from the massive blast. Bakugo breathed heavily as he stared at the massive hole now formed in Yue's hole. That's the most hypocritical thing I've heard in my life Kakchan. You're a fucking disgrace just like the rest of these heroes. Izuku shouted from behind him. Bakugo quickly turned his head as he heard the gasps of his fellow classmates. He scanned the crowd only for his eyes to land on Izuku's. The dark figure stared right back, 
before readjusting his hands and tightening his hold. If anyone takes another step I'll snap her neck just like all for once. Izuku threatened coldly as he tugged his arms around Yuraraka's neck. Baku. Bakugo whispered before his entire body filled with rage. I am going to fucking murder you, you quirk as fuck. Take your damn hands off her. Bakugo screamed as he ran towards the duo. Izuku tightened his grip causing Yuraka to let out a gap for air, stopping Bakugo dead in his tracks. Don't you ever compare to a tyrant Kokchan. You tortured me all thought our childhoods and so much more. Izuku spat out. A couple of guests escaped from his students as they looked at Bakugo for an explanation. What's he talking about Bakugo? Sero asked hesitantly. Bakugo went to speak, but nothing came out. He was at a loss for words. Bakugo here told me to kill myself. He told me to jump off the highest building in Japan and pray I get a quirk in my next life. Izuku snarled. Bakubro he's lying right? Questioned Kurshima. Bakugo didn't respond. He just lowered his head and stared at the ground. None of you really understand what being a hero is. It's not helping out society or those in need. It's about pushing the Hero Association's agenda. Izuku explained. Bullshit Shinu spoke up as he pushed his way to the front of the crowd. Then where were my heroes? Where were they when Kakchan told me to kill myself? Where were they when he repeatedly attacked me with his quirk? Where were they when any quirkless kid was in need? Izuku snapped. He felt Yuraka's nails dig into his skin. He peered down at the girl and saw the tears forming in her eyes. Don't do this Deku. Please. Yuraka cried. Oh and how can I forget about you? Why don't you tell everyone here your motive for being a hero? Yuraka's eyes whitened at Izuku's comments. To help Pio. Bullshit Izuku yelled as he tightened his grip. For money and fame. Yuraka screamed. Izuku let out a deep breath as he loosened his hold on her neck. You see? Heroes don't have the resolve of benefiting the people, only themselves. I and the other do have that resolve, and I'll be damned if anyone here is going to stop me. The entire crowd looked around waiting for someone to make the first move. It wasn't until a single brave soul stepped forward and broke the silence. You're right Deku, heroes aren't what they should be, and I've been a terrible person. All throughout my life I've tortured you, and made your life hell, all because you were corkless. I would apologize for my actions, because we already know it won't make a difference. But I'm going to make this world a better place for everyone, a world where quirkless people are equals. I'll become the number one hero and set everything right. Bakugo screamed. Izuku scoffed and tossed your rocket to the side. He slowly squared his feet and tossed his hands into a fighting position. Don't call yourself a hero. You'll never be a hero Kakchan. Izuku ran full speed at his former classmates not giving them a second to strategize. Izuku evaded Bakugo's obvious right hook and used the opening to attack Kaminari. Panic the blonde quickly jumped backwards and extended his hands while releasing a small discharge of electricity. Everyone down. Kaminari yelled as a wave of lighting flooded the air. His classmates dropped to the ground, allowing the full charge to run through Izuku. The dark figure staggered as the wave hit him, causing a smile to form on Kaminari's face. His express was quick to change when he saw the smirk on Izuku's face. The dark figure reached out and grabbed him by the mouth before pulling him close. You think tickling me is gonna do anything? Izuku asked as he felt something approaching from behind him. Izuku quickly turned and held the electric user in front of him, as a well-aimed cannonball buried itself into Kaminari's gut. Back the electric user coughed out as blood escaped his mouth. Izuku dropped his former classmate onto the ground and landed his eyes on Yurozu. The creation user had a wave of worry flood over her as she saw her classmate bloodied and on the ground from her own attack. Before she could react she felt a gust of wind followed by pain exploding from her side. Yurozu slammed into the ground, only to feel herself be lifted off the ground by her one arm. Come save her Shoto. She's already got two broken ribs and a shattered arm. You don't want me to break anything else on her now would you? Izuku taunted. A loud ripple of ice echoed through the crowd, causing a smile to grow on Izuku's face. The dark figure slammed Yuirozu into the ground and jumped into the air. Izuku scanned the crowd to find the rapidly expanding ice, and rotated his body to face it. As the ice shot towards him, Izuku placed his foot onto the sharp tip of the ice and rode the glacier until its climax. As the ice came to a stop Izuku pushed himself upwards, and disappeared into the dark clouds. Where did he go? Present Mick yelled as a group of heroes burst through the wall. He's up in the sky. Kurishima yelled as the heroes grouped around them. The heroes scanned the sky, trying to find the falling assailant. It felt like an eternity had passed, and they still had no sign of Izuku. Where the fuck is this bastard? Snipe screamed. Bunkyu hand broke through the ground and latched onto Snipe's leg. In one swift motion Izuku ripped himself upwards while pulling Snipe into the ground. Izuku quickly kicked the hero's head, causing it to slam against the concrete and splatter blood across the ground. Behind you. Bang, bang, bang. Present Mick slowly reached down to his stomach. He placed his hand onto his left side, before falling forward into the dirt. Bakugo angrily looked around himself to see the remaining teachers drop to the ground. 
His eyes landed on the dark figure as he emptied the rest of Snipe's revolver. Guns aren't as fun as I thought they would be. They're too easy to use, and there's not as much satisfaction when you beat your opponent. Izuku said coldly as he tossed the weapon to the side. The students all stood still as their teachers laid bleeding on the ground. Can we really beat him? Am I going to die? I should have dropped out when I had the chance. I thought heroes never lost. Izuku scoffed at the whispers and set his sights on Bakugo. The blonde stood with a pack of one of students who seemed to be shaking behind him. How can you call yourself a hero? Look at what you're causing. Bakugo screamed. Izuku took a deep breath and lowered his head to the ground. I never wanted to hurt anyone. I never wanted to cause anyone pain. I just wanted to live happily and be a hero. The people have only treated me like trash and thrown me around for being quirkless. And now, even with me being stronger than them, they look at me with disgust. It's hopeless, it doesn't matter what I do. Weak or strong. I just can't win. Bakugo stuck his arm out and aimed it at Izuku. He raised his free hand and grabbed onto the pin of his gauntlet. Say something you damn Deku. They don't deserve me sympathy. They don't deserve my mercy. Bakugo pulled the pin on the gauntlet, allowing all of his access sweat to ignite. The explosion rocketed outward, consuming everything in its path. Fuck all of them. Izuku slammed his hands into the concrete and flung upwards with all his might. The concrete ripped off the ground and crashed into the explosion, causing the intensity of the blast to die down. The explosion flooded over Izuku causing him to wince from the unsettling burning sensation growing on his limbs. HHH. Izuku screamed as he sprinted farther into the explosion before launching himself through the air. Izuku broke into the open and rocketed towards his classmates. Izuku rotated his body and slammed his foot into Mina's cheek. The pink girl fell backwards into Yorza's arms. The creation user quickly caught her unconscious classmate and looked up only to be met by a fist as dark as night. Izuku slammed his knuckles into the girl's mouth causing a spew of blood and teeth to fall out. Momo. Todoroki screamed as he sent a wave of ice at Izuku. The dark figure jumped to the side to dodge the ice and spun himself to shake off Jiro's incoming earphone jacks. Izuku quickly snagged hold of the extensions and landed back on the ground. As he landed Izuku pulled the cords, yanking the girl closer to him. Ah, Izuku yelled into extensions. Hiro threw her hands up to cover her ears as she fell to the ground. Blood trickled down the sides of her head as her body started to convulse from the overload of sound she took in. Stop him Bakugo yelled as he and the rest of the students charged Izuku. Bakugo threw a jab at Izuku and flinched as his arm passed through Izuku's body. What? The confused blonde spit out. Izuku's body stayed still and slowly started to fade away, leaving Bakugo standing there locked in place. The sound of bodies being beaten and bones breaking echoed into Bakugo's ear. The blonde slowly turned around to see the fading black stream followed by a handful of his classmates falling to the ground, covered in cuts and bruises. It's an after I'm chan Something you'll never be able to replicate with that pathetic quirk of yours. Izuku spat with each word containing more venom than the next. Bakugo peeked to his sides to see which of his classmates were still standing. It was him, Kurishima, Todoroki, Yuraka, Sero, Tokoyami, and Iida. Quirks aren't the problem Deku, and neither is being quirkless. It's just a... A loud tremor vibrated through the ground, followed by another and another. Izuku and the rest of the students eased up, and turned their heads to the back of the school. What's happening back there? Sero spoke up. Bakugo slowly backed up, and scanned the ground until he found a damaged walkie-talkie. He carefully picked it up, and held it to his ear. All teachers, this is not a drill, split into groups, all non-UA members are considered hostile, don't let the Lee. What the fuck? Boom. Everyone's heads turned to the explosion at the back of the school. The sky was filled with black smoke that occasionally flashed a bright white. Izuku squinted his eyes into the smoke, to see the outline of a huge figure looming in the dark. Who the fuck? Izuku started to say, before watching the figure disappear from his eyesight. Izuku barely had enough time to throw his arms up in an X across his chest, before a massive fist slammed into him. Izuku rocketed backwards and slammed through the side of the skull, disappearing from everyone's view. Bakugo clenched his teeth as he stared up at the giant beast next to him. His eyes locked onto the man standing on the edge of the creature's back. His red eyes peered in between the fingers covering his face. Bakugo let a deep exhale as he kept his eyes locked on the man. I fucking hate the league. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video. Like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.